what's up guys? So uh, yesterday I kind of lucked out. I was out for a run and uh, just in my neighborhood and I came across these three propane tanks. Um, so I ran home, picked up the car, drove back, picked them up. They were just on the curb. Um, they're pretty old and rusty, but they're gonna be great for some projects. I think one of these larger ones, which are just standard 20 pound propane tanks, it will turn into uh, a kiln for roasting and smelting ore. And the smaller one, it's only about nine inches across. So I don't know if this is from a trailer or an RV but um, it'd be a good diameter to use as the housing for a larger crusher. If you remember my mini rock crusher video that was six inches round, the hardest component to find was actually that something steel uh, and pretty thick that was the right diameter. So I think I could cut a couple rings out of this uh, and turn it into a rock crusher that's a little larger, or I could even turn it into a small ball mill. But for today, I'm just gonna grab one of these guys and use it to make my reason why I wanted to build one of these is because I quite frankly didn't want to spend $500 uh, to buy one. So I think uh, my costs for propane regulator, um, all the stuff I needed for the torch, the actual kiln itself, and the crucible came in well under $100. Uh, and I'll go over a detailed list uh, of my materials and costs at the end of the video. So to turn this into my kiln, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a larger hole in the top for gases and heat to escape, um, maybe just a couple inches in diameter. I'm gonna leave the, uh, the handle on here because <clears throat> when I cut this to turn one part into a lid, uh, I'll be able to grip this to pull, pull the lid off, um, either with some tongs or, or my hands if I've got some good gloves. Uh, and also for roasting, I'll be able to use this to just sit a cast iron pan on and it'll be heated from the bottom and that's how I can roast my sulfide ores. I'm going to uh, cut it probably about here to make this my lid. And then this will be my bottom portion. I'll leave that hole. I will drill a small hole in the side here so that I can insert my burner. And I will make sure that I insulate both the lid and the bottom part. I'll probably use a mix of plaster of Paris, sand, and either perlite or vermiculite. Try to make it about maybe an inch and a half to two inches thick all the way around. I'll pour a thing in the bottom and I'll pour some for the lid. Maybe reinforce that with some chicken wire. But uh, I think for now I'm going to go get the angle grinder so I can cut my hole in the top, cut my lid off, and uh, maybe sand it down a little bit because it's pretty rusty. Okay, so I've got my line drawn on here where I'm going to cut off the lid. This is about four inches from the center up to here, and it's another four inches to the center from the, from the center until it starts to curve down, uh, leaving about two inches and three quarters uh, in the bottom and two inches and three quarters for the top. For the body section, I'm just gonna basically fill the bottom of it, the bottom two inches and three quarter with insulation, uh, as well as about two and a half inches around the whole side of the body. For the lid, I'm going to turn it upside down, I'm going to fill that with insulation as well, but I'll leave a two and a half inch hole down the center for the gases to escape. Okay, so I finished cutting off the lid. I also switched to a grinding disc so I could grind down the edges of both the bottom part and the top part. And once I had the lid cut off, I sanded down both the inside of both of these things. And uh, I didn't end up needing the jigsaw to finish off my cut for the lid. I, uh, once I was able to flip it upside down, I could just finish it with the angle grinder from the inside. Now all I have left to do is I've got to make a hole on the side of my furnace here so I can insert the tip of my burner. Once I get that done, I'll be able to start mixing and pouring my insulation. And there we go. So the burner is going to go in at an angle like this. And we want to make sure uh, it's at an angle to help encourage the circular airflow inside the furnace. All right, on to the next step. 
Alrighty, so now that I've got my um, propane tank all cut up and ready to go, uh, it's time to figure out how I'm going to insulate it. Now I've seen a lot of different recipes that people use. Uh, sometimes it's just plaster of Paris mixed with sand. Uh, some people go out and buy uh, expensive refractory cement. I've seen some people use mixes of perlite and sand and vermiculite and um, regular Portland cement. Some people use uh, masonry cement. So uh, what I'm going to try today is using plaster of Paris, sand, and vermiculite. Uh, I kind of wanted to use perlite, but it seems to be sold out all over the city. Uh, I guess it's just the end of the summer and they're not reordering that sort of stuff because people just use it for gardening. So, but I don't know what mix to use. So I'm going to start off with one part vermiculite, one part plaster Paris, one part sand. Then I'll try uh, two parts vermiculite and three parts vermiculite because the more of this stuff I can use, the cheaper it'll be and the lighter it will be as well. So I've got some scrap plywood here. I'm going to make a little three inch by three inch by two inch form. And uh, so I'll just test those three different mixes and, and let them dry and set. And then I'll see which one uh, looks the best. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours since I made my little briquettes here. On the left we have the uh, one part plaster of Paris, one part sand, one part vermiculite. This is with two parts vermiculite, and this is with two parts vermiculite and two parts sand. Now I don't know if I just didn't add enough water to this one, or if the vermiculite component is just too high, but it was really, really crumbly, not very strong at all. I thought this one was a lot stronger, and, and it feels pretty good, but you can tell it, it crumbles pretty easily around the edges and then just crumbles up to nothing. So I think I'll just have to stick with the uh, one to one to one ratio. This thing's pretty hard. I can still kind of pierce it with my fingernail. Um, so I'm gonna go with one to one to one and then I just bought some Portland cement. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of Portland cement in there as well for some extra strength, maybe like a half part. Um, yeah, so that's what I'd recommend. Uh, I think if you used perlite instead of vermiculite, it would hold up a lot better because vermiculite itself is quite spongy. Um, so if you can get some per um, perlite, I would recommend that. Okay, I've got everything here I need to start filling my propane tank with insulation. I've got some sand, I've got my vermiculite, I've got my plaster of Paris, and I picked up a little cement. I'm just going to add like a half part Portland cement to the mix just to get a little extra strength. Mix all the dry ingredients in bulk in there and then transfer it a little bit at a time into a bowl where I can add some water. Uh, the plaster of Paris starts to set pretty quick so you don't have a whole lot of time to work with it. So it's best just to do it in smaller batches. Uh, I wanted to have a 7 inch diameter open inside my propane tank furnace. The closest thing I could find was a paint can which is about 6 and 5 eighths inches. So that's close enough. And then I've got a little uh, aluminum can there as well for the opening here for the burner to come in. So I'll use that and, and form the material around it. I've also got a bunch of small pieces of leftover chicken wire and I'm gonna use those to reinforce the um, homemade refractory cement inside the furnace. So just a hot tip here, uh, it's really not necessary, I don't think, to use the vermiculite or the perlite in your mixture. You really could just go 50% sand, 50% uh, plaster of Paris. And uh, although I earlier mentioned uh, it's probably best to mix it in small batches, I totally take that back. I think this would have been a lot easier if I just mixed it all into one big batch. Uh, I also didn't use enough water when I first started making this. My mix was a little too dry. Uh, I think it's probably best to have it a consistency that you can actually pour. You can see me here trying to like scoop it out of the bowl after. So uh, just do yourself a favor and probably make a, a much bigger batch and a much more liquidy batch so you can just pour it in and that way it'll it'll settle nicely. And 
I think if you saw my briquettes earlier as well, it sort of looked like I probably didn't add enough water when I made those. Uh, this is my first time working with uh, with Plaster of Paris, and I didn't really know how much water to add, um, but definitely make sure that it's it's runny enough to be able to pour. Now I've poured the uh, the base and getting ready to pour the sides. I put a paint can in the middle there just to keep uh, an open space. This is where the crucible is actually going to go. And in the bottom you can also see I've got a little aluminum can. And this is going to be where the, the burner is actually going to go in. And then I've just put my chicken wire around the side. This is just to help in case the, the cement mixture starts to crack in the future. Um, hopefully it won't uh, fall into my crucible. Okay, just a quick update. Managed to pour about half of the refractory cement mix and I was trying to wiggle the paint can every so often to make sure that it didn't get stuck. But apparently I waited a little too long between wiggles and now it's stuck. I spent the last probably 45 minutes trying to get it loose. So here's a couple hot tips to remember. Number one, don't use a paint can that's full of paint. Use an empty paint can because when the paint can gets stuck, it's a real pain in the ass to take out all the paint that's inside. I broke off the handle, and now I have to use vice grips and pliers to hang on to the thing. I think I've almost got it out. I would recommend, if you're going to use a paint can, not only to use an empty paint can, but to perhaps wrap it in some... probably saran wrap, or maybe even tin foil would be best. So that way, if the tin foil gets stuck, the can should easily slide out, and you can peel the tin foil off later. So I think when I do the second half... All right, so I made my way all the way to the top. Managed to get my paint can out this time in one go. Uh, I've just put a glove on and put some water on my hands here uh, and mixed up a thin batch of the sand and the plaster of Paris uh, just to do a little bit of repair work and smooth out the inside of the walls, fill out any holes and cracks. I think that's good to go. And over here you can see I've got the hole for the burner to go in. All right, all right. So uh, this morning I'm just working on the lid for my furnace. Uh, I've just gone ahead and I've cut four little slots out around the side about an inch up from the bottom of the lid. And then I went and cut these little thin metal strips out of what was left of an old baking sheet that I used to make part of my uh, mini rock crusher. And if you want to see how I built the rest of that, I'll, I'll put a link in the video description. But these I'm going to slot through here and here on both sides and then I'm also going to uh, weave them through uh, some leftover chicken wire here and I cut a hole in the middle and this is to make sure that um, once I poured my refractory cement it's hardened once I have the lid right side up when I lift it up I'm concerned that the entire block of refractory cement is just going to fall right out uh, so this will make sure that it kind of clings into the shell uh, another thing you could do would be to uh, just drill a few holes and put in some quarter inch bolts with some wide washers underneath uh, hanging down underneath in the shell and that could also help uh, hold on to the refractory cement. Then I'm going to take uh, this empty beer can here, wrap it in some tin foil and that I will slot in so that way when I pour my refractory cement uh, I'll have a nice hole in the top for the air to escape and then I'll just uh, seal up the gaps here with some wide painter's tape. Okay, I've got my lid all ready to go. I threaded through my little strips of baking sheet through the slots I made. I wove them through the chicken wire, cut a hole in the chicken wire, and put in my tin foil rat beer can. Here's a hot tip. Use a tall beer can to make sure that it sticks up above the level that you're going to pour the refractory cement. Using a tall beer can also means you get to drink more beer, and there's nothing wrong with that. And on the back side here, I just use some painter's tape to cover up the holes and make sure my beer can stays straight up and down. All right, I'll go mix up a batch and pour it in. I think I'll make sure I add a little extra water so it's runny enough to fit all through the, uh, through the chicken wire there. I 
at this point I think I'd finally figured out uh, how to properly mix this stuff and made sure I actually added enough liquid to it uh, so it could pour into the lid nicely and, and settle in the bottom just by giving it a little shake. Putting the uh, aluminum foil around that beer can as well really helped a lot because I didn't have to worry about uh, always wiggling the beer can to make sure that it didn't uh, get sealed up there with the uh, with the cement mixture. So. Once I was done, I was able just to, to smoothly pull the beer can out, and then I just peeled the aluminum foil off the sides. Okay, so here's the final product. It's uh, pretty dry now, pretty solid. Uh, I smoothed out the inside here quite a bit, and fits on top just like that. I took the tape off and the beer can out, so there's my uh, exit hole in the top. This will be great for roasting sulfides. I can put my cast iron pan up here, my sulfides on top, and the heat from the furnace will heat it up from below. I do have uh, quite a bit of a gap in some spots along here. Um, that was done intentionally. I wanted the cement to protrude up above the actual uh, lip of the steel so that it was sitting uh, cement to cement and not steel to steel. And what I'll do is I'll just either switch this back and forth and grind it down a little bit so it evens out or just use some sandpaper uh, and smooth out both the uh, bottom part and the top part until I get a, a closer seal. All right, time to build the burner. All right, all right. So I'm finally ready to build the burner for my kiln. Um, finally got all the components I needed. Most I found locally at my hardware stores, uh, except for this guy. This I had to order online. This is a propane regulator that's adjustable and goes up to 30 PSI. Um, most barbecue regulators only go up to 20. Uh, for our application, we're gonna need one up to 30, so I recommend getting one that also has a pressure gauge on it, so you know for certain the pressure that you're getting because sometimes uh, these can slip uh, with use, so pick up one of those. Okay, for the actual burner, we're going to need one three quarter inch to one inch reducer, one three quarter inch black pipe threaded on both ends. This one I think is 10 inches long. We're going to need a three quarter inch to one and a quarter inch reducer. Now, try to get all of this in black iron pipe, not galvanized, uh, particularly these two pieces. Galvanized pipe has zinc in it, and at high temperatures, zinc will vaporize and cause toxic zinc fumes. So since this is the actual hot end where the flame will be shooting out, you definitely need to get black iron pipe for these. I could not find a black iron pipe reducer of this size locally at any of my shops, so I had to go with galvanized, and I would have also liked to have gotten three quarter to one and a half inch instead of one and a quarter, um, but this is the biggest one I could find and I think it'll do. Uh, and since this is where the fresh air and propane are going to be sucked in, uh, I think this should stay pretty cool. If this does end up getting really hot, it probably means you have a problem with your burner and you should shut it off. As for the brass pipe fittings, this is a 1 8 inch brass pipe, 3 inches long. That's a 1 8 inch cap to seal off the end. This is a 1 8 inch one and a quarter inch bushing which will help our one eighth inch pipe attach to our quarter inch to quarter inch ball valve and on the other side of the ball valve we have a one quarter inch to three eighths inch flare adapter and this flare adapter on this end will attach to our propane regulator all right you're also going to need some Teflon tape to seal up the threads on your brass pieces. And you're going to need some really tiny drill bits. These are size 60 wire gauge drill bits. I had to order them online because they're not available locally. They come in usually, recommend finding one that comes in like a five pack or a 10 pack because you're probably going to break a couple while you're using them. Um, so again, that's a number 60 wire gauge. I've seen some people use a 60. I've seen some people use up to like uh, as small as like a 72 or as big as like a 53. Remember the higher the number, the smaller the diameter. So a number 60 wire gauge is 0.04 inches in diameter. 
and we're gonna use that to drill one tiny hole in the middle of our brass pipe. And that tiny hole is where our propane is gonna come out. Then I'm gonna drill a hole right through the side of this three quarter inch to one and a quarter inch reducer. And this brass piece is gonna slide right in there and come out the other side. And so the gas is going to inject from there and I'm gonna line the hole up straight down the center of this pipe and the fresh mix air is gonna come sucked in through the back of the reducer here. And that's it, so it's pretty simple. So all I need to do for this is to drill a real tiny hole in here with my number 60 wire gauge drill bit and drill a hole big enough to slide this through on my reducer and then I'm going to use some JB Weld just to hold the pipe in place here so it doesn't slide or it doesn't rotate because I want to make sure that little hole I drill goes straight down the pipe. One thing to look out for is because these drill bits are so small, the regular drill that I use, my DeWalt, um, has a hole in the center when you close the chuck all the way and so I can't actually grasp these drill bits with my drill. You can buy an adapter, or you can just call around some friends and see if they have a drill like this one that I borrowed from my father that doesn't have a hole in the center. And so this one will be able to grasp my drill bit. I think the adapters are about 10 bucks online, but uh, just before I ordered them, I called my dad and sure enough, he had one that worked. All right, so I'm gonna get started. This should be a pretty quick build. Okay, there's my itty bitty hole in there. That's all we're gonna need with the, for the propane to come out. Surprised. Didn't even break the drill bit. Okay, I've got both my holes drilled. Now my brass piece slides right through like that. And I'm gonna make sure when I line it up, and cement it in that this hole is facing down the narrower end of the reducer. That's gonna inject the propane into the furnace. So I suggest maybe putting a little mark on the opposite side of this so you can see it. Or Just looking down the hole like that and getting it nicely aligned before you cement things in. And I just got to put it all together and we'll be done. Okay, the um, torch is all assembled and ready to rock and roll. One comment I will make though, when I was drilling a hole through here to feed the pipe through, as you can see, it's not quite straight through. It's at a little bit of an angle. That's because I tried drilling right through in one pass and I don't have a drill press. I was just doing it by hand. I don't even have proper clamps or even really a proper working table. Um, so if you are gonna do it by hand, I suggest just measuring out and drawing two holes and drilling two holes separately. Uh, as opposed to trying to cut some corners and do it quickly like myself and do it all in one pass. So a bit of a mess up there, but I, my hole in the brass is still pointing pretty well down the center of this. Um, so hopefully it works out okay. If not, I'll have to go buy another reducer and try again. Uh, I also just got some new fire resistant gloves and a new uh, laser thermometer here, infrared thermometer. Uh, this thing does, can read up to 1500 degrees Celsius. So I'm pretty excited to try that out. It's 2700 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, I've got the furnace sitting over there ready to go. So it's been drying out for probably a good four days now. So I'm going to uh, first test the burner. Then I'm going to stick it in there at low temperature and just slowly heat up the furnace for like an hour or so uh, just to drive off any moisture.
And uh, probably goes without saying, but always try to keep your propane tank uh, as far away from the actual burner from the kiln as possible. Um, so make sure you get yourself uh, a nice long, uh, nice long hose. hear a little bit of popping every so often and you can see a little thing come off the wall of the furnace and I, uh, I think that's just has to do with maybe the vermiculite in there a bit of moisture popping so I'm just gonna let this run for half an hour uh, let the whole thing heat up and dry out and then I'll get the lid on there and work on drying that out too so far so good <laughs> Okay, so I've got my uh, crucible charge mixed up here. I also added 25 grams of lead pellets. I'm gonna put that in the kiln. I'm gonna light it up and let it melt. So uh, I finally got the charge up temperature here. Uh, it's probably just under a thousand degrees Celsius in my crucible. You can see, like, see it kind of bubbling and boiling away. I'm going to let it go for maybe another 10 more minutes or so to make sure it's fully melted and mixed up and uh, then we'll pour it out and see what we got. The thing I used as a mold to pour um, my molten charge into, I think it was just a measuring cup that I sort of hammered a, a point into in the bottom. It didn't really work that well. I did end up finding a much better mold to use online. It's actually part of a cast iron mortar and pestle. Uh, if I can find the link for it, I'll put it in the description below. But it made uh, a much better mold than what I'm using here in the video. should also be wearing some sort of respirator at this point while I do this. You can sort of see the smoke and fumes coming off of the crucible there. Uh, unfortunately, this was taken in the fall of 2020 when thanks to the uh, coronavirus pandemic, the respirators and things like that at the hardware store were pretty hard to come by. <laughs> 